Hi, this is Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video, I was thinking around and said, wait a minute, uh, let me do a different topic, a different approach on videos. So which video should I shoot? And I said, wait a minute. I, go, I went ahead and I did some research, uh, research on the difference of aquaculture versus mariculture. So I went ahead and I researched all about aquaculture and all about mariculture. And I came up with people that follow me know that, you know, I go ahead and I do a, an outline, bullet points, and then I talk about it. So today's video is going to be about that topic. What got me uh, inclined to this type of video today's topic is because on one of the corals that I got actually is a mariculture, uh, Fiji or Tonga yellow leather. And then uh, I'm going to start by doing, you know, the bullet points, but then later I'm going to put the camera and I'm going to show you the difference from an aquaculture to a mariculture coral. So let's take a deep dive and check it out. Okay, before we go into the topic, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, uh, as you're noticing, I'm doing a full shot of the tank. Because although you have a hunch of what's going on by the intro, but I thought now on the complete shot of the tank, before I go into the bullet points, I'll show you what I actually purchased. At Worldwide Corals on Black Friday, I got a hell of deals. Okay, on the upper right-hand corner, I got another uh, an Acapora. So as you notice, on the middle, I have a little one. They're doing great. So I think that between the stability of the tank that's coming back, the um, uh, liquids that I'm adding and all that, I think that I've hit that sweet spot because also on top of that small an Acropora, uh, that's the uh, purple cap, the uh, plating cap, which I had it on the lower left-hand side, and it wasn't doing too well, so I put it up there, and it was so-so, but now it's regaining its color. So this is one lesson to be learned, that when you actually see a coral that's not doing well, just move it around. And, it, and if you see it's still so-so, just leave it alone. With a little Anacopora, we're up to four weeks, and it's doing great which I haven't had luck when it comes to uh, Acropora. By this time, I would have been getting um, like pale and all that in another one week or two and they're, they're gone. So that's doing great. I saw that, so I went ahead and I, I bought that uh, an Acropora on the right. Now, going down uh, all the way to the bottom of, of the tank, on the lower left-hand side, uh, be between the pipe organ and the lobo. I got that um, blastomosa, gorgeous. Uh, it's one polyp, but when it, uh, re uh, when it contracts during the night, I'm noticing like two little fluorescent spots, like pimples on the right of that polyp. So I have a feeling that it's actually gonna grow to more polyps. So that's the other coral that I got. Now, panning and moving towards the right. Behind that brain coral, I went ahead and I tried again a Ganyapora. Now this Ganyapora wasn't that that expensive and uh, to be and it's it's uh, like uh, the tips are like fluorescent. It's not as opened up because uh, when the lights uh, went on which they go on at 11 o'clock and right now as we speak it's 201 here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, but when I got up and I noticed Apparently, one of the conch or, uh, or one of the um, uh, pin cushion urgent might have flipped it. So when I uh, got up and, and I looked at the tank, the um, Ganyapora was actually on its side. So I brought it up, but now it's opening up. It, it, it opens, I'd say, like another inch. It's doing great also. Uh, what I'm noticing with this Ganyo is that when I feed refroids, like let's say on Tuesdays and then Tomorrow, I'll either feed uh, reef chili or, or other products that, that I have. I, I can actually see the polyps close and consume that uh, food, which before, with the other Ganyaporos that I've tried, I really didn't see that behavior, to be honest with you. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed and hope that this Ganya will actually make it uh, for a longer period of time. 
And then right next to it on the right hand side, of course, the Fiji or Tonga yellow leather. That one cost me an arm and a leg, to be honest with you, but it, it had like a, a 30 to 40 percent. So I got a hell of a deal on it. But that one definitely it's uh, Mariculture. So that's really like I was saying before, that's what really brought me to this topic. I say, well, I mean, I have a lot of topics to talk about, to be honest with you. But this kind of triggered when I got that uh, Fiji or Tonga yellow leather, it triggered to say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, let me talk to everybody out there. I mean, for some people, it will be common information and for others, it will be new. So I thought I'd uh, do this video on this topic. So let me go ahead, take a seat over here, and then we're going to start with the bullet points. Okay, first, what I'm going to talk about is basically what I came up with when I saw a bunch of videos and research and all that. First, we're going to talk about uh, aquaculture corals. Aquaculture coral is also known as coral farming or coral gardening. It's the, it's the cultivation of corals for commercial purposes or coral reef restoration. Now, another thing that I came up with, of course, which is basically what is known when it comes to aquaculture, the mother healthy colonies are what's called fragged with special tools like band saws or surgical instruments, you know, like um, surgical pliers and uh, things of that nature. Uh, the other uh, bullet point that I came up with is fragged corals are placed on a fragged plug by either glue or other sources to keep them in place to the actual plug, uh, I'm sorry, to the actual plug as to adhere to it. Now, afterwards, they are dipped in iodine to avoid infections or traumas to the actual fragged piece of coral. And then finally, what I came up with was that afterwards, they are then placed in a control environment. In other words, the water parameters are correct, salinity, temperature, pH, DKH, on and on and on, so as to acclimate and to cure the actual process of fragging. So that's basically the bullet points that I came up with when it came to aquaculture corals. Now, we're going to talk uh, briefly about the mariculture corals, which is the, the Fiji or Tonga yellow leather that you guys are looking there on the lower right-hand side. Okay, now this is what I found out. Uh, mother colonies are fragged with tools like bone cutters, etc. Of course, not, not a bandsaw because it's under the water. Okay, now fragged corals are placed on dead pieces of corals, like this one, which I'll show you now on a closer shot, or manufactured plugs for the purpose of mariculture, in mine and attached with either tie rods or mesh type screens or other means in trying to keep them attached to the base in shallow ocean waters. Now, if you go to different uh, videos, you look it up on Google or in YouTube, uh, mariculture, you'll see more in depth or, um, you know, you'll, you'll actually appreciate what I'm saying here because you'll see like a mesh or like some kind of a screen. And then you see all these corals that have been uh, attached either with tie rods or with other means on shallow waters, uh, usually in the Solomon Islands, Fiji, Tonga. And they're, they're in their natural environment. They, they are cut, you know, from the mother colony and then they're, they're placed here and they have constant observations to make sure that everything's going well. And then that leads me to the last bullet point here, which uh, mentions that afterwards, when considered healthy and ready to export from the ocean, they are removed to the surface and packed accordingly for distribution. Now, one final thing, and it's actually a question, and this is where I'm going to go ahead and do a close-up on the uh, yellow leather. The question is, how can you tell if a coral piece is either aquaculture or mariculture? Well, here's the answer. Aquaculture corals are usually attached to a frag plug, where mariculture corals are not 
and are usually attached to a piece of dead coral or a larger uh, plug, which is usually made of different materials, different than made for aquaculture. Okay, so what you have here, I focused to the uh, Fiji Tanga, shall we call it, yellow leather, which is on the right, and then on the substrate, of course, I have the Ganyopora. Okay, what I just mentioned, <clears throat> if you follow me, this is what I'm explaining. If you look at the Ganyopora, it's on a, a plug. So if you look closely, you'll see that it's, uh, you know, that little piece, it, it, like I mentioned, from the mother colony, they are fragged, and then they are glued, and they're put in a plug. So that's what you're seeing when it comes to the Ganyopora. But if you go to the right, and you look at the Fiji Tanga yellow leather, you'll notice that it's not plugged. It's actually on an old um, skeleton of a uh, acro, and it's actually attached to that uh, Acropora. If you follow Worldwide Coral, you're, you're going to notice that uh, not too long ago, Victor went to California. And uh, there's another reefer, uh, very famous, I'm assuming, uh, over there that took him to all these wholesalers and uh, LFS. And he bought tons of high-end corals and he chipped them here. Now, being on the Pacific side, most of these corals that um, Victor brought over uh, from Worldwide Corals were mariculture. They, they were not fragged, uh, you know, like here in the, either on the middle of the United States, central United States, or here in the East Coast. But keeping that, that in mind that this is from the batch of Vic's pick of uh, when Victor went to uh, the West Coast. And all those corals that I was looking at the video, they all came from Solomon Islands, from Fiji, Tonga, of course. And then they, uh, that's the actual collecting station. They prepare them. Then they come in first through um, California, through the, uh, the Pacific side. And then from there, of course, it's distributed all around the United States and we get the corals here. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting, educational. If you did, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And like I say, right next to it, there's a little bell. That's the notification bell. So when you hit that, uh, you activate your notifications on your device. And every time I upload a video, which is usually weekly, you'll be the first ones to know that Eddie's Reef Aquaria uploaded a video. Uh, like I say at the end of, the, of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you for watching and stay safe and cuddle up with this cool, cool weather. Bye-bye. Until next time. See ya.